Well, we analysed the semi-finals and are taking a look ahead to the finals. Mo, the two best teams in the competition for you this season? For me, I think so. You look at points for both at the top of their game. They've both won the most amount of games this season. So, yeah, probably the right two people are there. Absolutely, yes. Well, we start with Saracens and having a look at how they got themselves to the final. Now, Saracens are very happy to play without the ball. They actually only had 35% possession. And what I wanted to show is what that means in terms of possession time. Less than 11 minutes ball in hand Saracens had in the game and yet they scored 30 points. Mo, so would they have trained for that with that little possession time? Yeah, I, I think so. Potentially don't realise how little that time is. I think they'll be quite shocked to see that stat as well. But as you can see, they kick the most in the league. So a lot of their possession comes from just trying to play in the right areas. So they put boot to ball, they go nice and long and they get after it with their kick chase. So Lottie Clapp for me was exceptional in that semi-final. Just how she closed down space, chopped them down and, and then they managed to regain the ball. So they're always looking to play in the, in the 22. When they get there, they're so dangerous. Great, absolutely. And then when they do get the ball, they are very deadly with it. And we move on to some of their attack stats. So you mentioned this, we were talking about how physical the game has become here. And Saracens here in the game, 75% gain line success, 47% collision dominance. Now, just to mention what that means as well, is that is an over the gain line carry, not just something that gets stopped before. And a collision dominance is where you manipulate the contact area so that you get, go forward as well. And those numbers are so extreme. Three and four times that Saracens get over the gain line in their carries. I mean, that's phenomenal kind of stats. That's crazy. I think also nearly 50% tackle dominance. So every time as a team you're carrying in, you'll be knocked back one in two. Like that's mental. There's no way that you can play against teams like that. I think this is this is so appropriate to how they play. Their forwards are massive. As a nine, I'd love to be on their team behind a pack that does that because it's just an armchair ride. There's no way that you can compete at breakdowns to slow that ball down. So everything's just a knock-on effect and you just continue that momentum, which is how Saracens do play. Right, and exactly that, and it links into their ruck speed. So they didn't actually have that many rucks to play with, but the average ruck speed was three seconds. And I know that's a very small amount of margin, 0.3 seconds difference, but 0.3 seconds faster at every single ruck does make a difference at the end. And the final one on the end there, percentage quick ball, is the percentage of rucks they had under two seconds. So again, one in three times their ruck is away less than two seconds. And again, as an armchair row for a nine, that's the kind of ball you want to play with, right? Yeah, exactly. It just makes everything so much easier. If, if there's no time for the defence to set, you just ball away and it just means you have so much more time to pick options, play on defenders, sit people down. And yeah, it, ma it makes the game so much easier. Definitely. All of those together, if you can piece both of those together, it creates you opportunities. Opportunities in the opposition 22 or the red zone. And Saracens didn't actually have as many as Harlequins, but their efficiency, their points per entry were incredible. Just to give us a bit of context, these two teams were dead even. Second best in the competition this season at 2.26 points per entry, which is our red zone efficiency. But in the semi-final, Saracens were able to improve that to three and Harlequins dropped off to 0.83 with a try at the very end when the game was done, really. But that kind of efficiency from Saracens is their game plan. It is, and this is why I talk about Saracens knowing and finding a way to win, because when it matters, when, when it's like the most important semi-final, in finals, they do this, they increase, they improve, and, and it's just so difficult to defend against. So Saracens have a line out in the opposition 22 and it actually gets a little bit scrappy. So May Campbell does very well here to react and get a carry over the gain line. She actually makes nine metres off of the back of this carry. So well reacted there, does a great job, very good carry in the first instance. Yeah, and you think for all money at the moment, Harlequins are going to come up with this ball because as an isolated attacker in the 22, real danger play, but brilliant clear out to keep momentum. Marnie Packer for me here does such a good job. Recognises she's actually the fourth player into that ruck, but 2.7 seconds gets them on the front foot again. Yeah, and everything about this is going forward. The momentum to the line. You see what this does to the defenders. So Harlequins have actually got four on the blind side, marking no one really, but they don't have chance to get around. Amelia Harper here, a little bit out of it. Poppy Cleo doesn't even allow the ball to be presented. She just goes in straight away over. Everyone expects her to just secure that ball, but too quick thinking for her. Super efficient, super fast. No chance for the defence whatsoever to react. And a fantastic try for Saracens there. OK, so moving on to Exeter Chiefs and how they like to play. They actually want the ball in play a lot. Both of these teams do. Saracens actually the first and Exeter the second. But then Exeter average the most amount of carries per game. 20 more, in fact, than Saracens in second place. But what we saw in the semi-final was that Bristol really dominated this. Ball in play was even higher than Exeter or Saracens average. But then Bristol had the majority of the possession. 
28 minutes, 41 seconds possession time and 176 carries to just Exeter's 80. A huge defensive effort from Exeter, right? Yeah, that's mad. I think the stat coming out was that Exeter made over 300 tackles and three of their players made over 30 tackles each, which is just crazy to think of. They would have had to have some serious ice baths and downtime after that. 100%. A huge defensive effort from Exeter and they averaged very good tackle success for the season, third best in the competition. But what's vital for them is how many times they get two players into the contact area. The most in the league just marginally better than yourselves mm. mate so why is this important why are two player tackles so important you just it helps with that collision dominance that we were talking about that tackle dominance so you you manage to stop people on gain line that second person in also they're the one that add the force to drive them back the other way it gives your defensive line time to set depending on how you do it it gives you time to get back to feet to be able to contest that breakdown as well which we don't see a lot from Exeter but it is something that is is used across the board and yeah it makes it really difficult because there's no real options if two people are closing you down the whole time maybe something that they can employ to stop that gain line succession collision dominance that we showed from Saracens so we've got the clip here now this is just one example Exeter had to defend multiple phases where they went multiple possessions back to back and this example from a kick chase just to just show the first line this is where the gain line started so this is where the first point of contact was and this is where Exeter start defending from very good again two players in that tackle straight away what they do so well as well is they hold players up, they, they just make it really difficult to get to floor, which gives this line time to set. The big one for me here, here was even though Bristol got gain line success, they actually didn't commit any players and can still manufacture their structure outside of that to be able to deal with the next threats. Yeah, absolutely. You just see everyone knows who they're on. They're working in numbers. Here you see a counter coming on. That's the time that it's taken from the initial contact to the ball being able to be played away. Seven seconds. And that just gives your defence so much time to get set, to mark up, to get prepared and organised for the next phase, right? Yeah, here you see as well, double tackle. So one's gone low, one's gone leg chop. The other, Delika Menin's come in. She's gone high. She's tried to hit and come through that. And this is that example of when you slow that ruck down, you can get everybody set. They're coming up straight line, marked up, and they know who they're going to go and tackle. And then a huge hit from Catherine Zachary there. Brilliant hit, wasn't it? That's Brilliant. absolute textbook. That's the kind of defence that we're talking about. Two players can be, control the situation. We cut this towards the end. This was 10 phases that this possession went on for. And you can see here that Bristol only made six metres in 10 phases of play. Yes, they got a penalty at the end of it, but it was just one example of how Exeter were able to stop and hold out Bristol so well. They don't commit at that breakdown. They leave space so that tackler can come up straight away, jump into the guard position. And then as a line, they just know who they're on. They're coming up. It's the intent to keep going and keep chasing those feet. And as you mentioned, double hits coming in, no option in attack to send those off blows because there's people all around you. They're very, very good at it. So we saw that Exeter don't have much possession, but when they got into the red zone, they took their chances really well. Just seven entries compared to Bristol's 11, but took more points from them. That also includes three possessions in the first 20 minutes where they converted every single time. Three fantastic conversions from Gabby Cantona for a 100% success rate and seven points per entry. Yeah, she's brilliant. Top percentage kicker in the league, and that is definitely somebody you want on your team going into a final. Fantastic. Two great teams, two very physical teams, going to take their chances when they get to a great contest coming up.